In this unit, we will be working with rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are any number that we can write in the form of a over b, where a and b are integers and b does not equal zero. This also includes the repeating decimals and terminating decimals. When we're looking at examples of rational numbers, in the word rational, we should see the word ratio. So a ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. So this is why we can write this over one and we're just comparing these two numbers by division. So all of these are rational numbers. So normally we would see, oh, that's the rational number because we associate rational numbers with fractions only that look this part. But remember, all of these numbers are examples of rational numbers. So when we take a look at this particular rational number, this fraction, 24 over 64, we have to try to figure out what number can divide 24 and 64 evenly. And, that, and you might have guessed too. 24 divided by 2 is 12, 64 divided by 2 is 32. But this is not in its simplest form, so we have to divide by 2 again. So this gives us 6 and 16. Again, still not in its simplest forms. We have to do it one more time. And now we have two. We have our fraction in simplest form. This should be, look very familiar to the factor bracket when we're trying to find that LCM and the GCF. We factored out a 2. We factored out another 2. And we factored out one more 2. So when we looked at 3 and 8, we can see that 3 and 8 are relatively prime. So that means that we can find our GCF by multiplying 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, or 2 cubed. And also our LCM, remember we always find it from the bottom. From the bottom now we're here. 8 times Started 24 from the bottom, now the whole and team 3 is. times 64 is the same thing as 192. So again, we only can find the GCF and the LCM because 3 and 8 are relatively prime. A quicker way would have been just to factor out the greatest common factor of 24 and 64, and that would be 8. And this would give us 3 over 8 in simplest form. Likewise, with the factor bracket, we are factoring out our 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 64 divided by 8 is 8. So again, we have our LCM which is 192, and our GCF, which is 8. 3 and 8, we stated that are relatively prime. But now, in, when we're simplifying fractions, we're not going to use the term relatively prime. We're going to use a term called simplest form. Or they might use reduce completely. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to reduce fractions to simplest form. Our essential question is, how does knowing your math facts help in reducing fractions and finding the GCF and the LCM of two numbers? Simplifying fractions means to reduce to simplest form. The numerator and denominator needs to be relatively prime numbers. On your guided notes, please write this down. A fraction is part of a whole. Fractions with the same denominator are called like fractions. The denominator tells us how many parts the whole is divided into, and the numerator tells us how many of those parts we're dealing with. So when we take a look at these three fractions, the numerator is telling us how many parts we're dealing with. The denominator tells us how many parts we have. Do you know which fraction is the largest one between all of these? If you guess that they all were the same size, you are correct. Some fractions may look different, but are really the same as, as the example above. Fractions should always be expressed in simplest form. The simplest form is one half. So I can divide this numerator and denominator by two, and this would give me one half. Here I could divide numerator and denominator by three, and I would also get one half. So all of them are the same. One half is in simplest form. So let's take a look at 8 and 12. So all we have to do is we can use the factor bracket if we choose to. And we have to try to figure out, hey, what number goes into 8 and 12 evenly? So if you guess 2, you are correct. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 12 divided by 2 is 6. But 4 and 6 are not relatively prime, so we have to try again. 
and 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. Now we know that 2 and 3 are relatively prime, so we can find our GCF, which is going to be, I'm sorry, we can simplify it. It's going to be 2 over 3. Let's take a look at doing it a different way. So if you stated 4, that would be the fastest way. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our fraction in simplest form is now 2 thirds. Another example, 9 and 15. Think of what number can divide 9 and 15 evenly. And if you guessed 3, you are correct. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Our fraction in simplest form would be 3 fifths because 3 and 5 are relatively prime. A third example would be 6 and 12. What number could go into 6 and 12 evenly? If you guess 2, then you are correct. It would go 6 divided by 2 is 3, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and but you would have to try 3 now. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So our fraction in simplest form, since 1 and 2 are relatively prime, is 1 over 2. Another way would be to, instead of going with the 2 first, start with the 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now we can see that 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 and 2 are relatively prime, so now we can write our fraction 1 over 2. And the quickest way would be to factor out the greatest common factor, which is 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 1 and 2 are relatively prime, so we know that it's going to be 1 over 2. So th this is the same as just on the first example, dividing the numerator down by 2 and then 2 again to get 2 thirds. Or we could have just divided by 4 to get 2 thirds, the numerator and denominator. 9 15th, we would divide the numerator and denominator by 3, and we would get 3 fifths. 6 over 12, we did it three different ways. We first divide the numerator and denominator by 2, and then by 3, and that would leave us with 1 half. Or we could divide the numerator and denominator by 3, and then by 2, and we still get 1 half. And the final way was to divide the numerator and denominator by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So let's take a look at this um, problem. It says Johnny owns a total of 14 pairs of socks, of which 7 pairs are black and the rest are blue. What fraction of the pairs of socks are blue? So when we look at this, when we're writing the fraction, it's going to be part to whole or part to total. In this case, we know that there are a total of seven black socks. So if we have seven black socks, that means we must have seven blue because he has a total of 14 socks. So 14 minus seven is seven. And the total amount of socks he has is 14. So it would be seven over 14. So if we want to know the fraction, we would have to simplify this by simply dividing the numerator and denominator by seven, and the answer is one half. And you could also use a factor bracket and we would factor out a 7, and 7 divided by 7 is 1, 14 divided by 7 is 2, and that would give us the 1 half as well. In our last example, Desiree baked 12 cupcakes for her friend Aiden. He gobbled up four cupcakes. What fraction of the cupcakes did Aiden eat? So again, it's part to whole or part to total. So in this case, we know that there was a total of 12 cupcakes baked. We also know that Aiden gobbled up four cupcakes. So this would be four over 12. So to reduce this, we would try to figure out, hey, what number can go into four and 12 even? Well, four is divided by four, and four 12 can also be divided by four, leaving us with one third. And very similar to a factor bracket, four goes into four one time, and four goes into 12 three times. Our answer is right there, one third.